What's going on guys? Today we're going to compression test the Mazda. Um, make sure the motor's healthy. Now, typically it is best to have a rotary compression tester. Um, it's a really cool factory tool or there's some aftermarket ones. You hook up to the um, spark plug hole. It has a digital readout that tells you all three of the sides of the rotor, what that compression is. Um, unfortunately, the Mazda dealership, theirs happens to be out of commission right now. They're waiting on a new connector for it. It's supposed to be here in a few days, but I wanted to make this now. So there is a way you can use a normal compression tester, but it's a little less ideal. You've got to kind of interpret the needle sweeps but nonetheless, it'll still work. It'll tell you if your engine's healthy or not. So first things first, we need a compression tester. So I've got my Mac Tools compression tester here, and this works for normal piston engines, um, but it will also work for this rotary. Now, the one thing we will need to do is pull out the Schrader valve, which is in the end of the hose that you connect to the engine. So it's a normal tire Schrader valve, so you need to pull, it up, pull that out so the needle doesn't just gain pressure and hold, it'll sit there and bounce. So we're gonna fire up the car because you want to do a hot engine compression test with a rotary. Um, this has been sitting for a couple of weeks now, multiple weeks, I'd have to look to see the exact amount, but quite a long time. Obviously I keep a battery extender on it. If it's gonna sit for an extended amount of time, but this will be a good test of a multiple week cold start. So we'll jump in, fire it up, we'll cut um, after it's ran up to operating temperature and then we'll jump under the engine bay and actually test that compression. All right guys, so we've been sitting for, gosh, I'd have to look to be exact, but a couple of weeks now. So this is a couple of week cold start. As you can see, we've got oil pressure, a very cold engine. But other than that, a very painless startup for it sitting for multiple weeks. All right guys, so now that we've got it warm, I sat there and let it run until it was up to operating temperature. RPMs came down to a normal warm engine idle shut it back off, burnt my hands, pulling some spark plug wires, pulling the bottom two leading spark plugs. And I went ahead and pulled off the upper spark plug wires just so we wouldn't fire up. And I also unhooked the two wires off the ignition coils. One of those is going back to power the fuel pump um, just so it's not running and dumping fuel while we are compression testing. Now, um, We've got the compression tester hooked up to the leading plug right now on the second rear um, rotor housing. And we will cut to a different view so you can actually see the compression tester. And now we will obviously repeat the process on the front rotor, um, testing it the same way, cranking it eight plus times just so we can watch those needle sweeps. And we will throw that in now. So guys, as you can see, we were hitting around the 100, 110 mark on that gauge. Obviously it's kind of hard to read um, as it's bouncing, but everything I'm reading shows, you know, 100 to 150 is that good range for a hot engine. Um, anything under 75 is not gonna be starting with a rotary. And like I said, this thing's always fired up really, really well, even cold like it did today, sitting for multiple weeks. So obviously, surely there's gauge discrepancies. Um, I really wish I had the factory Mazda compression tester, which unfortunately is down at the dealership. That is not working right now, but at least we've got a 
you know, sign that the engine's nice and healthy, not hurt, good compression. Both rotor housings are really super even, which is kind of cool. We don't have one that's weaker than the other, or one of our needle sweeps barely, you know, hits 50 or something. So to me, that indicates we've got good compression on all three sides of that rotor housing, apex seals, all of that in good shape. So guys, hopefully that was kind of informative. We at least know the health of that motor now, and we'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching.